Hey, what's up guys, I'm Nizio Cole, and today I actually wanted to talk about Life is Strange 2 and how I felt about it in general, and the reason why I didn't continue the Let's Play after the fourth episode. Also, remember spoiler warning for parts of the story from Life is Strange 1 and 2, and with that out of the way, let's get started. So I'm going to say right off the bat that this was my least favorite Life is Strange game, and yes, I am counting Captain Spirit as well. When I first started playing the game, I had the impression that it was a walking, talking simulator, but I held out for it and I kept playing it even though I really wasn't enjoying the experience. And now that I'm thinking about it, the reason I kept playing was that I kept expecting it to be like the original Life is Strange. Don't get me wrong, I liked the first episode, but it wasn't my favorite. I think the game started off pretty strong, but I really didn't like the ending. I get that they're trying to relay a message, and I get that they're trying to show that it's not always happily ever after, but it just didn't feel right. I play video games to escape reality, not to be reminded of it. And again, you could draw parallels to the ending of the first game, but in all honesty, one of the main things that separated the ending of this game from the ending of the other game is believability. Life is Strange 2 was a lot more realistic than Life is Strange 1. From the start, I was already in the mindset that it was something that could actually happen, besides the whole car flipping over and the powers thing, but it was a pretty believable um, them running away because they're scared, they don't want to be in jail, you know, it, it's pretty believable. Opposed to the first game, which I already was in the mindset that it was a sci-fi superhero story. I mean, if you just look at the main goal plotline for each story, it's clear how different they are. One is about running away, trying to protect your little brother, and the other one is about reuniting with a childhood friend, as well as solving the disappearance of Rachel Amber and Max coming to terms with the fact that Chloe was destined to die. If you look at it much deeper, you can get the meaning of sometimes you need to let things go. I think the first game is a lot more nuanced than the second game and also has a lot more diversity in each individual episode. Another reason I really didn't like Life is Strange 2 is it felt like you weren't in control. I was used to the, you know, having time powers, and I guess you could say the same thing about Before the Storm and Captain Spirit, if you're even counting Captain Spirit, but Before the Storm is, is a prequel, you know, there's no time powers or anything. So even before I played Before the Storm, I still wasn't even expecting for there to be time powers because this is before, obviously before Max got her powers. But with Life is Strange 2, it's a full-blown sequel, and it just felt kind of weird in this kind of role where you're coaching Daniel instead of playing as Daniel. I think it would have been a lot more interesting if the game was from the perspective of Daniel, personally. But now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about a few things that I really liked about the game. I would say out of the whole game, the second and third episodes were my favorite. And out of those two, it would have to be the second one. I really liked the dynamic between Sean and his grandma. Like, they were kind of at odds at the start. But towards the end of the episode, they kind of made up after that, you know, big fight about their mom and everything. And I really, really, really like the inclusion of Captain Spirit in this episode. It just kind of made it so much cooler for the people who played Captain Spirit and then played Life is Strange 2. And you're like, oh, this scene is, you get to see the scene from Captain Spirit in the middle of episode two, but from a different perspective. And I thought that was really cool. Honestly, when I finished playing Captain Spirit, I thought that Chris was the person with superhero powers. My favorite part of the episode is where they go to the market, meet a few people that are going to be prominent in the next episode and go buy some things. During the part where Daniel is showing Chris his powers, I tried my hardest to pick the dialogue options that would make it seem like I'm not mad at him because I know if I had powers like that, I would definitely want to show some people. Also, don't worry, I made sure to save Chris at the end when they were getting chased by the police. And I'm honestly, Chris getting hit by the car, I didn't even know like that, that's a, honestly, it's a really dark turn for the Life is Strange series. I guess it's not dark when you're talking about in context of other things, but it, it was just written off like at the end of the episode. Like I didn't even know, it, I, it didn't even occur to me until I finished the episode and it showed all the choices. And it was like, you let Chris get hit by the car. And I'm like, what? What? How is that even an option? You know, it's like Chris is the most wholesome person ever. And there's an option to let him get hit by the car. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Another good thing I can say about the game is the artistic style and graphics are massively improved upon from the first game. And it's not like they were necessarily bad or anything in the first game, but I think that the theme and the vibe as far as color grading and post-processing were a lot more focused for each individual episode and put more emphasis on the fact that they were in a different setting in each episode. The original game took place in one city, but the second game was all over the map. And it's really nice that they actually showed and put emphasis on things like that in the color grading and things of that nature. 
And the last episode, while being my least favorite episode story-wise, is the best looking in my opinion. I mean, just look at this, it's beautiful. In conclusion, I will give the game a 6 out of 10. I didn't do a review on the first game, but in comparison, it's about a 9.8 out of 10. For me personally, Life is Strange 2 started out really strong, but I really didn't enjoy the ending. And it felt really bittersweet, but not in a good way. Not in a, the end of Infinity War, everyone gets snapped away and, and you're just like, that's it? It just felt like I was waiting for another episode and that wasn't the real ending. It also felt like I didn't really accomplish anything and kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Let me know your guys' opinions on this game in the comments below, and it's been Cole. Peace.